Welcome, this is my video critique for pre-calculus for the Unit 2 quiz. Get ready for that test, baby, so it's a good thing you're here. Okay, determine the remainder of the following expression. We get this fourth or third degree polynomial divided by a linear polynomial. But because this is not in the form of x minus r, it's got the coefficient of 3, it says synthetic division is not really a smart move. So we're going to do long division. So we take our... 6x to the third guy divided by 3x to the fourth. First term divided by first term, that's here. x to the third divided by x is an x squared. And then 6 divided by 3 is 2. So there's the first term of our quotient. We multiply back. 2x squared times 3x is 6x to the third. 2x squared times negative 4 is negative. Notice in gray, negative 8x squared. And then we subtract the whole gray thing. That means change the signs. That's in red. And add. There's my equal sign for adding vertically. So the x to the thirds cancel. 7 and 8 make a total of 15x squared. So now we have this other stuff here. You can bring it down here and write it down here if you want. Or you can just leave it there, uh, like I do, because I'm lazy. I'm not going to write it over for no good reason. So I take the first term here, divided by the first term there again. So 15x squared divided by 3x. x squared divided by x is an x term, so that's the right column. And then 15 divided by 3 is a coefficient of 5. I multiply back 15x times or 5x times 3x is 15x squared, and then 5x times negative 4 is negative 20x. And then we change the signs and add, so the x squareds cancel. We get negative 47x's plus 20 of them give me negative 27x. First term divided by first term again, negative uh, 27x divided by 3, and so x divided by x I cancel out. Negative divided by positive negative, 27 divided by 3 means it's negative 9. We multiply back. Negative 9 times 3x is negative 27x. Uh, negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36. No, with positives, I leave the, I don't put the positive down because those are hard to change. So if it's blank, it's positive. And then we subtract, which means change the signs and add. So these guys cancel like they should, and then we have negative 36 plus 30. That gives me a remainder of negative 6. Answer D. This is the long problem. Hey, but out of 10 questions, it's just this one that's long. Which of the following is not a root of this guy right here? Well, for roots, all these guys like this, there's a linear factor of x minus 4. Here, the linear factor would be x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 3. So synthetic division. We're dividing by a factor in the form of x added to the opposite of the root. So there's my coefficients. 1, 1, negative 14, negative 24, and I'm going to divide each of these. 4, negative 2, 2, and 3. So we bring the 1 down. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 4 times 5 is 20, minus 14 is 6. 4 times 6 is 24, minus 24 is 0. That says this guy is a root. And we're looking for the one that's not a root. So not the correct answer. Uh, try negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is, is positive 2. Added to negative 14 is negative 12. Negative 2 times negative 12 is positive 24. Added to negative 24 is 0. So negative 2 is the root. So not my answer, that's for sure. <clears throat> 2. Bring the 1 down. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 14 is negative 8. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Added to negative 24 is negative 40. That's the guy that's not the root. Because what are these other guys saying? Well, they're saying f, this is the remainder theorem, by the way. f of 4 is equal to 0. Well, what's the definition of a root, which is an x-intercept? The value for x when y is 0. Boom, 4 is the root. f of negative 2. Also equals 0. That's the remainder, right? So the remainder is the value of f of the divisor. So negative 2 is a root. And this says f of positive 2 is negative 40. Negative 40 is not freaking 0. So 2 is not a root because it's a value for x that makes the function equal to 0. Well, this value for x makes the function equal to negative 40, not 0. So this is not a root. There's my answer. And then just to eliminate the last one, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 1 is negative 2, uh, positive 6 minus 14 is negative 8, positive 24 my, uh, minus 24 is 0. So this guy is a root. So 
we've eliminated all the incorrect answers and and basically proven that C is the correct answer. Okay. Same kind of question, same process. Coefficients here. 1, 8, 1, and negative 42. Boom. And my divisors are 2, negative 7, negative 3, 7 here. Notice I put 2 in, I get 0. 2 is a root. Same question, what's not a root? So I put negative 7 in, we get 0, so negative 7 is a root. We put negative 3 in, get 0, negative 3 is a root. We put 7 in, notice we get 105 here. 7 times 105 is like 735 minus 42. That's like 600 and something. It's like, it's a huge freaking positive number. It's not 0, not a root. There's my answer, D. 7 is the only one that's not a root. Simplify the following expression. Notice we're multiplying two complex numbers. I just distribute when I multiply, always. You don't have to remember any rules for multiplying, any acronyms like FOIA, like some teachers teach. Just distribute. That's all multiplying is. All the time, every time we distribute. So we distribute 4 to both these guys. 4 times 3 is positive 12. 4 times 9i is 36i. We distribute the negative 2i to both these guys. Negative 2i times 3 is negative 6i. Negative 2i times 9i is negative 18i squared. i squared is really negative 1, so negative 18 times negative 1 is actually positive 18. That makes this like terms with a positive 12 in the front. So 12 and 18 add up to make 30. 36i and negative 6i make 30i. So clearly, answer B is correct. What kind of roots are associated with the factor here? This is a difference of squares, so this will factor in turn to x plus 7 and x minus 7. So that means the roots are going to be 7 or negative 7. Actually, negative 7 for this guy, and the root here is positive 7. Now, why is that? Because the square root of 49 is an integer, which means it's rational. So if the root, if, if this guy is rational, then the roots are rational. So gives it away. You know, if you put uh, a number here that's not a perfect square, like 48, 50, 23, 24, whatever, it'll be uh, irrational because you can't take the square root of those guys and get a whole number. So it's irrational. But since 49 is a perfect square, that says rational. And if this was a plus sign here in the middle, that would make that imaginary because it wouldn't be a difference of squares. It'd be that special form, x squared plus k, I talked about in a couple of the videos, so it's like, hey, that says imaginary all over it. What's not a root of the polynomial function here? So, coefficients, 1, 2, negative 25, negative 6, 120. 1, 2, negative 25, negative 6, 120. I'm just going to try all these numbers, the divisors. 2, negative 4, negative 3, negative 5, in that order. Notice we put 2 in, we get 0 for a root, that's a factor. We put negative 3 in, we get 0 for a root, negative 3 is a uh, root, not a factor, a root here. So x minus 2 would be the factor that goes with that root, but 2 is the root. Put negative 5 in, we get 0 here, so negative 5 is a root. We put negative 4 in, and we get some big positive number. Because we're going to go negative 4 times negative 94, that's going to be like pretty close to positive 400. You know, uh, 382 or something like that. 384, I think. And then add another 100, that's a huge positive number. So that's the guy that's not a root. Answer B. Uh, what's the vertical asymptote? Vertical asymptote, so that's where the denominator is 0, but the numerator is not. So notice the numerator is 0 at plus or minus 3, because this is a difference of squares. This is also a difference of squares, but the square root of 36 is 6. So that means the vertical asymptotes are at positive 6 or negative 6. Notice none of the answers listed are negative. Two of them are 6. So we know uh, A and B are eliminated. If you did this guy up here, you would have got A or B. So that was actually a good fake answer. And here, it's like this, x equals 6 or y equals 6. Well, we're talking vertical asymptotes. So notice y goes up and down. y is not the same. y goes from negative infinity to positive infinity on a vertical line. What stays constant is x. So on a vertical line, the equation is always x is equal to 
some number, whatever constant number that is. In this case, it's 6. So just the basics of writing the equation of special lines that are vertical or horizontal gets you this answer. Otherwise, answer D looks delicious, tasty. Mmm, I'm going to have a bite of that. Not a good plan, my friend. Okay, what's the horizontal asymptote of the following rational function? So we look at the degrees here. So, oh, that's a mistake. Somebody here doesn't read very carefully. So we're looking, if these are the same degree, it would be the ratio of leading coefficients, 1 to 3. But this is a second degree polynomial, and this is a third degree. So the numerator is a lower degree than the denominator. That's where y equals 0. That's always the x-axis, when the numerators are lesser degree than the denominator. The horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, period. And there's the equation for the x-axis. y is always 0. What's the root? Well, that's whenever the numerator is equal to 0 and the denominator is not. And so if we put 3 in here, 3 minus 3 would be 0. So the root is x equals 3. Answer C. Determine the behavior of the given function at the leftmost vertical asymptote. There's our function. Notice the denominator factors to x minus 4, x minus 5. So that means our uh, key points here, critical points, are 4 and 5. And there the function is undefined. So these are both vertical asymptotes. And we want the leftmost vertical asymptote. So we're concerned with the dotted red line. We don't care about this guy over here. The question asks, what's the behavior on both sides of this asymptote? Now, here's the thing. This is muy importante because it changes the signs big time. So we have a negative already here. And then here, when we're to the left of 4, then this factor is a negative. And if we're to the left of 4, we're also to the left of 5, so that factor is a negative. So what do we have going on in this interval here? We have a negative times a negative times a negative. Or you do it up here. A negative times a negative times a negative. Three negatives multiply to make a negative. And then over here, we're on the right side of this guy, so that becomes a positive. So we have a negative times a positive times a negative. That's a positive. And then we're to the right of 5. We have a negative times a positive times a positive. That's a negative. So there's a sign analysis. So at the leftmost uh, vertical asymptote, we're negative on the left, positive on the right. Answer D. Now notice how critical this guy is. What if this wasn't there? What if that were actually positive 5? It would be like, okay, well, I have a negative times a negative. That's going to make this guy positive. And then in this interval here, we have a positive times a negative, which is a negative. And then in this interval here, we'd have a positive times a positive, which is a positive. All the signs got flipped because multiplying by negative changes the sign. And so, yeah, so they all got changed because we took away the negative that they're all multiplied by in the original problem. So it's cool for you to understand that. All right, that concludes the practice quiz. I hope you got something out of the video. And, uh, you know, study hard, do well. Get a hold of me for tutoring before it's too late. And, you know, make a good test score first time around. That's the goal because you only get one time around, really. We might do, I might do some retesting on an individual basis, but I'm going to make it a pain in the butt. So it'd be best for you if you just get it done right the first time. Always, that's always a general rule in life is do it right the first time and save yourself time and money. Okay. Other than that, be good. We'll see you later. Ciao.